so any of you anyone any time heard about spring anyone guys heard about it So yes, I have uh, heard about the Spring Framework. Like, oh, what do you understood by it? What do you, when you mm. heard about it? Like, what do you understood by it? So Spring Framework use uh, Spring MVC, like um, model view and control uh, design pattern. Okay. And used to build a web application. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, but what exactly is this MVC? Like, what is MVC? MVC is a model view uh, controller design pattern. Mm. That's the pattern they use to build an application. Okay. Hmm. That's right. So, like Spring as a framework, it has some core functionalities. Okay, that basically cater to the wide range of application development scenarios, and at the same time, Spring comes with a lot of uh, modules. The framework is completely modular. Mod when I say modular, it has so many ready-made modules. Uh, depending upon your use case and the type of application you can build in, you can choose some modules or you can choose uh, at the very basic, you have a core module, right? And then you have a lot of other modules. at the So it's completely modular. You can choose uh, any module you want. You want to plug in and you want to unplug the modules you don't want based on your scenarios, whatever the type of application you're developing with. And it's uh, it's that quite easy, you know, uh, because of its modularity, right? So having said that, um, let us just try to understand about this framework in more and see how it basically helps, right? So Spring framework, uh, the framework was introduced in early, 2000 right 2000 somewhere it was yeah, you know uh, introduced into the software development world back then you have other frameworks like struct which are quite popular and uh, in early 2000 spring framework came in and eventually it started its dominance uh, from day one because of the frameworks uh, ease to use and the uh, power, uh, you know the features it basically provided, right? So, the Spring framework it was basically uh, owned, owned, and maintained by. I mean, it's open source definitely, but most of the time it's maintained by the uh, Pivotal company. Okay, Pivotal. So it's an organization which basically owns the Spring framework. I mean, they maintain that the open source uh, things of it, right? And yeah, so let's just quickly see what it is, right? Spring Framework is a lightweight solution and a potential one-stop shop for building your enterprise-ready applications. However, Spring is modular, allowing you to use only those parts that you need without have to bring in the rest, right? So when we are talking about Spring Framework, right? <clears throat> yeah. So it basically makes your programming pretty easier with Java, right? And it's, it's pretty easy to use and it's pretty safe to use, right? And it's basically focused on speed, uh, how speed our developers can start you know, building things using Java, right? And then it, it has a lot of simply uh, simplicity, the way we use it and that's why it, it, it's it's uh, Spring is definitely the world's most popular Java framework to build enterprise applications, right? And there are a lot of tools that basically come with Spring framework and the, 
and we can reap these benefits of having a lot of out of the box solutions and you know not to worry about writing so much additional code and all right so it basically saves you a lot of time and energy so what i mean here is the spring framework comes with a lot of out of the box solutions uh, when i say out of the box solution suppose you want to uh, interact with some cloud or suppose you want to interact with some uh, database right spring has a lot of ready made libraries right so we can just apis a lot of apis are built into spring framework so we can uh, like for interacting with database we can make use of spring data jpa and we can right away start within no time we can actually uh, you know uh, start, start interacting with database uh, to retrieve the data and to store something in the database it's quite simple because of the pre built libraries and like i said a lot of out of the box solutions like we no need to write so much code if, if at all spring was not there, to interact with the database we would have written so many things like first of all we would have uh, created a something called a connection factory a connection and then by configuring all the respective details of the database right and then we used to bring in the domain level objects into the in into the database uh, development whatever we are doing and then there would be a lot of other things uh, like in terms of building repositories and uh, yeah, taking care of transactions opening database connections closing them and a lot of uh, i would say boilerplate code like whatever if you make thousand interactions certain actions are same across all these thousand uh, interactions when you interact with database right so these kind of a boilerplate code you need not keep writing thousand times right you just write once and you make use of it for the other thousand times whenever you need it right so it it helps you to eliminate writing these kind of boilerplate code okay so that's why you know it's quite popular framework it, it's the framework has a lot of libraries okay which are being widely used across the industry and uh, i mean if you find spring framework it has lot of uh, lot of uh, use cases like uh, like uh, be it streaming services or online shopping or whatever is banking whatever you name it every industry is using the spring framework okay so uh, having said that like spring is also being contributed by you know the tech giants like amazon google microsoft and all right so you you with that you can understand the popularity of it right and uh, generally your uh, the spring framework it comes with a lot of third party libraries and uh, at the core of it spring has something called inversion of control and dependency injection features ioc and uh, da features uh these basically provide the foundation to build wide range of features right like whether wherever we are building some secure applications or reactive cloud based applications microservices or data flows streaming data flows right everything like for example you know you're watching a live video stream so streaming data flows like spring has a lot of tools that will help us to build any sort of solution right and definitely spring is productive and fast because of it it a lot of uh, you know uh, out of the box solutions that it has and the rich libraries uh, the design approaches it has templates uh, templates it has it's quite productive right you no need developers no need to write repeated code or boilerplate code again right and uh, yeah of course it's definitely secure and uh, you have uh, like you said whatever solution you use spring spring has a dedicated module to handle security in building uh, enterprise java java applications like spring security is one part one such module right and uh, i'll just quickly take you to the website of spring.io okay so it's not just for the web application is it it's no not for web application you can build many applications like you can build server side applications right spring okay. mvc module it specifically used for web application okay what you said but in as the framework it has lot of modules 
and one such module is spring mdc well we are going to talk about so this is the spring website guys like if you go here right and you can understand spring projects here spring boot spring framework spring cloud spring data flow spring data spring security i'll just open this a lot of spring projects you have right you see here spring of apache kafka spring ldap spring vault spring web services a lot of projects i think in this area we are specifically focusing on spring boot which which is part of our course right we are going to talk about spring boot which which quite which became quite popular to build microservices right spring boot framework so we will be uh, you, uh, talking about spring boot framework spring framework is the core right i told about something called ioc and dependency injection right so spring framework the core basically supports it right and uh, these are different these are the modules the core technologies of spring include the dependency injection which i said the ioc container events Uh, validation data binding spring has its own query type of language called spring expression language eop and all right and then you have spring mvc and spring webflux to build web frameworks integration solutions modules like jms jmx and of course spring sub not only supports java based programming it also supports other programming languages like kotlin and groovy based development as well right and data access for interacting with the database for testing also spring has a spring mvc test or test context to framework module within spring so like there's a lot of future spring has okay you can go and just go through this website browse through it understand it and just see what it is right so you'll just try to understand more about spring okay you can go to quick start area probably you will find a lot of uh, you know small tutorials or demos kind of how to build certain things with spring right so th this this basically talks about what spring can actually build right so like you can build serverless even driven batch ma many thing many type kind of uh, use cases with the spring framework okay and this like i said this was owned by pivotal company and i think later it was acquired by vmware okay so vmware right now spring is owned by vmware okay so if you see here it, it, this is basically talking about spring boot project specifically so you can just go and give us a quick uh, you know quick look and see what it can do right so like there are a lot of and it has a very big community support right so like whenever you get some issue in spring you can go to the spring community you can go to stack overflow online resources and you can just post your query and there are a lot of people who work on spring right you will get a help in no time right so normally for open source projects it's really difficult to find a community support but spring is the framework that has you know that has the best community support right like where you get help from a lot of other developers uh, and people who basically use spring framework right so that's what it is and uh, yeah just go and explore this website and see so if you, you can find some interesting things right having said that i also mentioned a link here you can just go through this link and uh, in addition to what i cover i mean definitely we have very short time but i'm going to cover a very, a very high level of it basically what is help you helps you to get comfortable in the job right i'll just focus on those things but if you want to really uh, i mean i i would recommend you to really dig deep into this framework right because that will basically create a basis for your software development career right so this is a very pretty important framework so you can go to this page read everything in detail okay all these links you can read everything in detail 
right? So it, it talks about Spring MVC, Spring on the web, Spring MVC specifically, and then it also talks about Spring persistence SQL, basically Spring data, Spring JP to interact with the database, Spring security, Spring batch, right? So it has a lot of all, it, it covers these important modules. So it's a, just a quick read. You can probably go through this, spend, spend a week, like whenever you get time and just try to give a quick, quick overview of this. Okay, it will like really help you, yeah. Now um, we are going to talk about the first concept, like the main uh, main Spring uh, core framework, right? The the core framework of Spring is I, I just told you guys some time back. It is the IOC, right? Inversion of control and the dependency injection feature. So basically, uh, let's start with what is IOC, right? Uh, like, so basically in Java, we uh, we all know that everything is an object, right? Like we, we need to create certain object to do something and uh, using that object, we call certain methods, do our thing, whatever functionality we want. And that's it will be done right at, the, at, at some scenarios uh, we need a lot of objects to do certain thing right like you may you may have made your functionality split into multiple classes and to do certain thing you may need to create multiple objects not just one object right so at end of the day spring ioc container talks about uh, rather than as a programmer we creating objects for us like we instead of when, how do we how do we guys create an object in java guys how do we create guys it's a simple question how do we create an object in java don't overthink Varsha, Shweta, anyone? How do we create an object in Java? Okay, I see silence. Just, just give me one or two lines, right? Some keywords at least. So probably. Class. Huh? I mean, we just create like uh, we create a class uh, from a project, and then mm. I don't know exactly what the question is. Uh, so using question new is, keywords. Sorry. Are you say, yeah. What was that? Are you asking about the keywords? What we use or like? Yeah, like you see, my question is pretty simple. How can we create an object in Java? Right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, I thought you're asking how we create a class. Sorry. No, no, yes. No. Yeah. What? What is it? I kind of. I could. I didn't get it quite. Uh, right. Like what? What were you saying? Someone from home's phone said something. Right. What was it? Using new keyword. Using new keyword. Right. As a programmer. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah, you know, yeah. So basically, using new keyword, we create objects, right? Whenever you you can have hundreds and thousands of classes, like uh, to do certain thing. If at all you want ten objects, you would definitely use new keyword to create those objects, right? And if at all you have some six seven classes, and three of those classes, uh, let's take one particular class. To do its own job, it needs objects of two, three different classes, right? Then definitely we need to create those objects first and then, then this class can make use of those objects to do its own things, right? So, so basically inversion of control, it basically talks about transfer of control of this object creation, right? IOC tells us uh, like, 
you, as a programmer, you don't create, you don't create any objects. Okay. So I am a framework. You give the control to me to create the object. So I will create this objects and whenever, whatever object you want, I'll create it and I will give you. Okay. So that is what inversion of control is, is basically talking about. Inversion of control is nothing but as the statement says, inversion of control, transferring the control of creating objects to the framework. Okay. And it is also called as a container, framework, container, both are kind of uh, words used, uh, you know, uh, synonymously. Okay. So you, you, you can use either, uh, I mean, it, it basically, I was is a principle, which is basically talking about as a programmer, you don't create any objects. You just tell what objects you want. I will, as a framework or as a container, it's also called as IOC container. As an IOC container, I will create that object and I will give it for you. This is what IOC is talking about, right? Uh, I, yeah, so inversion of control is a principle in software engineering, which transfers the control of objects or portions of a program to container or framework. We most often use it in the context of object-oriented programming. At runtime, IOC builds the class classes object and makes it available wherever it is required. It is primarily responsible for ensuring uh, ensuring that objects life cycle is maintained. So when we say object life cycle, right from creating that object to, right? When you say creating an object, that's putting that object in Java's memory, keep memory and right from, uh, you know, uh, destroying that object. When you say destroying, removing that object from the memory. This entire object life cycle is being handled by this particular IOC container. Okay. Understood, right? Like what is an IOC? I mean, we'll just see some example in what context it is relevant. But you guys understood the core idea of what is IOC, inversion of control? Yes, theoretically, we are just understood. But... Yeah. Uh, let us see some example, right? Like what exactly I was talking about. Um, uh, suppose, uh, let's take one class, okay? Mm. I'm just going to create one class, like for example, What we call it as like you want to book movie ticket, for example. Okay. I'll say I'll say this. Okay. Book. Book movie. A normal Java class. Okay. And now this book movie class. You have a movie class also, for example, right? Just creating a movie class. Uh, yeah. So now you see, I have two classes. One is book movie Java class and another is a movie Java class. Okay. So I think just give me a moment. Yes, my system is very slow. Yeah. So we have two classes here, okay. One is the book movie class. And this. Yeah, one is the movie class and another one is the book movie class. Okay. So in order to book a movie, you need, you need to select a particular movie, right? Like which movie you want to go to. Like suppose your movie class has certain attributes like this. Name, name of movie, right? And then string 
length length time what is the time of the length right and uh, string category like whether that movie is um, U certified or A plus certified, U A certified, you have some censorship, right? Like probably uh, we, we can say censorship like this, right? You have certain movie class. Okay. In order to book a movie, you need to have a selective movie first place, right? I mean, that's the general common sense, right? So like, so that means your book movie class is dependent on movie, okay? Like selected, selected movie. Okay. So I'm creating one particular field if you see here. The selected movie is, is of type movie, okay? So that means my book movie need object of uh, movie class, yes or no? When I define it this way, my book movie definitely need an object of movie class, yes or no? In order to book a movie here. Are you guys following me? Yeah, we need. We de definitely need, right? So uh, what do we do in, in general scenario, right? Like, wh what do we do? I'll just show you something. Okay. So what do we do here? Uh, we'll get a movie object first. Okay. We select the movie equal to new of so first we will be creating movie object right and And I'm going to create a book movie object. Suppose this has a method like okay. public word. Ticket, something like this. Yeah. And here it will make use of uh, like this out. Probably here we are making use of the selected movie. Okay. What our movie is selected, we'll just we'll just do some steps here. Like for example, pay pay this out. Pay the price. It will pay some the ticket cost, right? Or quantity of tickets we want. Or we, we would also select the theater or a theater, which is basically a cinema, which is basically running this particular movie, right? So select theater. And then pay the price. Uh, some steps we do in this particular method, okay? And uh, now in the over here, we will try to create an object for book, uh, book movie. I'll just simply call this M. So this is what we do, right? We, we select book movie. Now, how can I give this movie object to book movie? Us? Tell me. Uh, 
how can we give this uh, movie object to book movie class what did you say sir i cannot hear can you repeat again please so basically i want to print these statements okay or i i want to give movie object to book movie class how can i give it so basically my book movie object class needs movie object right how can i uh, give movie object to book movie class that's my question simple question this is your book movie class this is your movie class my book movie class needs the movie object okay how can i provide that yes not a question right I got the question. I'm confused. What is it? So, um, so you're saying you are going to give a, a object from a book movie to a movie? I mean, from movie to a book movie. Sorry. Come again. From movie to a book movie, right? Hmm. now we'll create an object okay so i have created the objects here movie object is there book movie object is there so how can i pass movie object to book movie um You have a movie class, and then you have a book movie class. Your book movie class needs movie object. How can you pass it? So here I have created one movie object, one one book movie object, right? Okay. So can we do something like this? Right. We can call the method or extend. Um. Why do I extend it? So if you see here, I just as called the dot operator dot um, book movie dot selected movie, and I assigned this value as a movie. So this way, I am supplying movie object to book movie class. Okay, understood, right? So what is that call? It's it's a method or what? How do we define that? It it is understanding. Like I'm, I'm just directly assigning something to the field. That's all. to so the field of book movie uh, selected movie is a field right and what what uh -huh. what type of field it is it is a movie field so that means movie object right so to selected movie i am directly assigning that as a movie like this okay got it right mm, i am still confused is it 
how we we were assigning integer values like if we created integer a we used to create the object of that particular class and we used to say that object dot a and we equal to assign it five it is the similar way right there is nothing we didn't do mm -hmm. yeah. right it is the same thing right this is something it's very simple thing that we did okay but mm -hmm. th this is with the current knowledge we have okay uh, but now I, I, there is one thing here first of all you are creating a book movie object and then you are assigning but but if you see the picture here my book movie object shouldn't be created and until and unless i have a movie object okay suppose movie object is not at all created in in first place is there any point of creating book movie object and uh, book movie object it's like book movie object does not exist with movie object Th that is the situation here right so if movie object is not there does it make any sense to create a book movie object no so what can we do here how can we ensure that dependency is met w what is this dependency whenever book movie object we are trying to create movie object should have been created for sure i want to ensure it that way so how how can i do that now you got my question right movie book movie object cannot exist itself it definitely need movie object then we shouldn't be creating empty movie ob, empty book, book movie object okay so we need to be really sure when i am creating book movie object i have movie object as well with me then only i'll create a book movie object right so this is like whenever i created object like this my movie uh, this selected movie is null and later i am assigning this to the movie object which i created okay i can create movie object after this also okay i can do this also this is also valid right so i'll create first i'll create book movie object and then i'll create movie object then i am assigning movie object to the book movie object okay but my question here is if book 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 movie object does not exist with without movie object then how can i ensure when i create book movie object i have movie object available ready if you look at this scenario here without movie object i am able to create my book movie object right so how can i ensure that i create book movie object uh, without you know without creating a movie object i mean only when movie object is created i should be able to or available i should be able to create my book movie object you understood the challenge and the question here right so this is a dependency your book movie object is very tightly dependent on movie object right so how can we deal with this Take a minute. Think. Have you guys understood the problem statement here? Yes, the movie object is um, book. Movie object is uh, using movie object. So you want to you. Uh, so you want if there is no movie object, then how book movie object is going to use a movie object? basically if movie, book movie object is so dependent on movie object without availability of movie object we shouldn't be creating book movie object in first place okay how can we enforce this programmatically okay i'll i'll do this i can use a constructor okay So there is no constructor of it. Right? You can use a constructor like this, and here. Here I can specify.
Now, when I say this, now whenever we are creating book movie object, aren't we, uh, aren't we also creating movie object automatically? Are we doing it or not? In the constructor itself, I am trying to create a, a movie object. Yes. Now, whenever I, whenever I create object of book movie, new movie or movie object is also created for me automatically, if you see here. Yes or no? Yeah, because of the constructor. Right. Because of the constructor, right? So this is a default constructor which gets invoked whenever we create an object. When we say book movie, your default constructor will execute and it will do whatever that is there, right? Suppose, suppose uh, the, here you are creating a new object of movie. Suppose let's take one scenario. Instead of creating new movie object, I want to supply existing movie object when I create a book movie object. How can I do this? Rather than creating new movie object, every time I create book movie object, I have existing movie object, which I will should be passing to the book movie object when I construct book movie object. How can I do this? The next step of it. I'm just giving you another scenario, okay? How can I achieve this? Guys are overthinking as much. Constructor we have argument based constructor, right? So we we invoke the another one. This is what I'll do. You see here, when I am creating book movie object in the constructor itself, I, I created one uh, argument constructor, a constructor which takes single argument, movie selected movie, and it will assign this selected movie, this object, whichever we are passing from the object creation syntax. From here, we are passing SMO movie object, which we created, right? So here we are passing. This is also valid, right? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. So which do you think is the better approach? This is the better approach. But this is the better approach. End of the day, by book movie class needs movie object. Okay. So I showed you two ways. This is the one way. And this is the other way. Which is the best approach. Second one. This one. Yeah. Why? Uh, because we are passing the parameters and uh, okay. Uh, in the first one, and we can change it. Um, yeah, I think you are coming near. So the second approach is definitely better. The one which I highlighted because. In the uh, no argument constructor one, you're every time creating new movie object. But whereas in this, the highlighted portion, you are passing the movie object. That means the passing movie object can be new movie object or existing movie object. So it is giving you that flexibility, right? Yes. So definitely the highlighted portion is the best approach. Okay. So now you can understand that book movie has a dependency on movie class dependency right so if you see here now in inversion of control principle what we tell is 
we will just simply ask the spring to provide provide this dependency for us movie dependency like if you see here we are writing this much code first we are creating new movie and then we are uh, making call to book movie right and then uh, here we are using a constructor to provide this movie dependency so lot of things we are doing right you guys are observing or not we are using new keywords so basically spring ioc container talks about don't use new keywords okay no don't use new keywords like you just tell like it it, it you just tell whatever uh, objects you want we will automatically find and inject the or inject like provide those dependencies for the classes whichever need what objects we will provide them automatically that is what spring inversion of control or ioc container talks about right and uh, with that we have another uh, new approach called dependency injection so basically what is dependency injection now if you see here movie is a dependency of uh, book movie class yes or no can we yes. say yeah right so how can we inject this movie dependency into book movie class that is what dependency injection is going to talk about dependency injection is a pattern of implementing ioc it enables the creation of dependent objects outside of class it enables dependency injection enables creation of dependent objects outside of class and providing those objects to a class in variety of ways right just remember this statement dependency injection enables creation of dependent objects outside of a class and providing those objects to a class in variety of ways so that means our book movie class needs movie object right so this movie object creation is done outside of that book movie class and whenever your book movie class uh, needs a movie object it will provide you those uh, objects in a different mechanism right and we use dependency injection to move creation and we use dependency injection to move the creation and binding of dependent objects outside of class which they are dependent right this is another important point so depend using dependency injection we uh, remove the object creation everything so we have we, and we and dependency injection which means the ioc container right the dependency injection container spring core container the ioc container dependency injection container or spring core container container all these are same okay so this this basically takes the responsibility of creating and binding the objects providing the dependencies whatever we want so all this is happening outside our java class that means all this is happening in spring container okay so what spring with spring now you saw this right this is a this is what we can do with normal java right how spring does it you know in spring you don't need to do this okay you just come here you say at component Okay. When you use this at component uh, injection, the IOC container will automatically create an object of movie. Okay, just by using annotations. And whenever you use at component on book movie, the container will automatically create an object for book movie. But in order to supply movie object to book movie class here we will want this annotation that's it at auto void now with these three annotations what spring container is doing in the back end is it is creating a movie object it is creating a book movie object and it is also supplying book movie object to sorry movie object to book movie object using at auto void so these many things are happening with these three simple annotations isn't it easy 
as a programmer, we are not bothered about when we are creating objects or when we are destroying objects. Spring uh, IOC container or dependency. This is also called as dependency injection pattern. Using this uh, spring, we, we are uh, spring container is creating an object for us, and it is also uh, giving the dependencies, injecting the dependencies. Here it is injecting the movie dependency of book movie class wherever we need it. Isn't this simple, guys? Yes. So this is the power of Spring framework, Spring Core IOC container. Okay, and uh, th this is what dependency injection is. Okay, so once again, just look at these two uh, definitions properly. Right, inversion of control is a principle in software engineering, which basically transfers the control of objects or portion of program to a container or framework. Right, and we often use it in the context of object-oriented programming at runtime. This this basically happens at runtime, right? Uh, your IOC builds classes and objects and makes it available wherever it is required, and it's primary res and it is primary responsible for ensuring object life cycle is maintained. So this is the IOC concept, and using dependency injection, we are implementing the IOC principle. Okay, so uh, if you see the diagram here. This is the spring container. This is your IOC container and your business objects are nothing but this one, okay? Uh, movie, book movie is nothing but the business objects, okay? And the configuration metadata is this one, at component, at component, at auto, -add. this is the configuration that we are doing. Whenever we supply the objects and the configurations to Spring Container, it will automatically pro produce fully configured system ready to use. That means it will automatically create the objects of movie class, book movie class, and it will inject the dependency of movie class into the book movie class. Okay. So on the behind scenes, it is doing all these things. Okay. So this is what it is. And in general, if you see, there are different types of dependency injections. Okay, one is constructor injection, setter injection, and the field injection. If you see here, this is a field injection. We are injecting dependency into a field. Okay, if at all we want to put this in a constructor, right? I'll just show you. This is how we do it. This is called constructor injection. Okay. So th this is if I put auto wide on the field here, this is the field injection. This is the constructor injection. So when I put on a constructor, what it will do is it will create the movie object and it will pass it to this particular constructor argument automatically. And you will have both book movie object and movie object readily, movie object and book movie object readily available. Okay, this is called constructor injection. And the next, the, the first one we saw is the, this is the field injection. Okay. This is the field injection. Okay, this is the field injection. This is the a constructor injection. Okay. Uh, yeah, now, what is the other one? Setter injection. Well, setter injection will look something like this, okay? You will have, you will just set the dependency using set method. That's all, nothing much. So you will have, so I'll just generate the setters and getters. Okay, I'll just select getter, select setters. Okay, so if you see here, I, I'm taking the movie object, but using a setter method, I'm trying to create an object here. Okay. So this is called, if you put an auto weight on this, this is called setter based injection, dependency injection. Okay. If you see via setter method, I am assigning this dependency. Okay. You can see the three types. This is the field injection. This is the constructor injection. And this is the setter injection. These are the types of dependency injection I'm talking about. Okay, clear? Yeah. Any questions here? We'll stop our session uh, here today. So I'll just take any questions if you guys have.